Wild Talents by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 9 in The Phantom Stabber of Bridgeport, Connecticut, appeared 1st February 20th, 1925, and the last of his attacks, of which I have record, was upon June 1st, 1928. That was a long time in which to operate and caught. In the daytime, mostly, though sometimes at night, girls were stabbed. In the streets, in such public places as a department store and the entrance of the library, descriptions of the assailant were indefinite. In almost all instances the wounds were not serious. One of the stories, as told in the New York Herald Tribune, August 27, 1927, is typical of the circumstances of publicity, or of the confidence of an assailant that he could not be caught. If my stories will be regarded as ghost stories, a novelty about them is the eeriness of crowded thoroughfares alert near Coventry Street, London, and the sneak of an invisible in Broadway, New York. I expect some time to hear of a haunted subway during rush hours. Edgar Allan Poe would say of me that I'm no artist and don't know how to infuse atmosphere. One would think that I had never heard of the uncanniness of dark nights in lonely places. Some of the stories are of desperate plays for notoriety. I have a story now, not of doings in the graveyard, but in the department store. Bridgeport, Connecticut, staged on a staircase, with an audience of hundreds of persons, there was a very theatrical performance. A review of this melodrama was published in the Herald Tribune. The stabber who has terrorized Bridgeport for the last 30 months appeared this afternoon and claimed his 23rd victim in a crowded downtown department store. The victim was Isabel Pelsker, 14, 539 Main Street, messenger girl employed in the DM, Red Store. The girl was stabbed in the store where she was employed. The stabbing occurred at 4.50, just two minutes before closing time of the store. Already some of the store doors had been locked, and a large crowd of shoppers were being ushered from the store. The employees were leaving their counters, and the victim had started up the stairs from the arcade side of the first floor to the women's dressing room. The girl had scarcely ascended more than half a dozen steps when she was attacked by an assailant who lunged his sharp blade into her side, causing a severe wound. He got away. Nobody reported having seen him escaping. The girl could give only a meager description of him.